So back after a weekend to our second exercise, making our own vector shape custom emoji. We use this simple program to generate a guiding emoji, right? And this is what I was able to get for my concept, which is a Hawaiian cowboy. It's not a lot of Hawaiian in here yet, but I have these little nostril clouds to remind me I want to do a collared shirt, you know, that might show that he's relaxing. Let's see. So how do you get something from this? Well, you can do a screen grab, right, which is in the directions, doing Command Shift 4 for a Mac, print screen for a PC, or if you don't care so much about the quality of it, you can download a PNG. It's going to go to your downloads folder like most stuff from the internet, and then you can just bring it in to your Photoshop file. The important thing is to set it up so that it has the right number of pixels to be printed. So you're going to check what's called the image size. That's where you can always check resolution. So image, image size. And mine is 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That's what you want. And then you can size whatever you brought in using what we used a lot for our cartoon jumble. That's edit free transform, where the shortcut is command T in Photoshop. In photo P, you'll also find edit free transform. And then you can just grow it, kind of make it bigger. As long as it has some white space around it and it's on a canvas that is 8 by 10 inches. And you can check that through image size. 8 by 10 by 350, that's what we need. And we get there through a combination of image size and canvas size. All right, so now that we've got our guiding image, we don't need this open anymore. You can go back to the directions. And the directions tell you how to do it through this freeware program. So I'll, I'll show you how to set that up. It's exactly the same as on Photoshop. You just say, open from computer. You can find either your screen grab which was this one. My screen grab has a gray background on it. Or download the PNG. I downloaded the PNG for this one. That, that way it gave me the edges of the gray clouds, which get blended in here. Because the screen grab, of course, is all flattened. So how do I size it? I go to image, image size. And I'm going to just grow it on each side a little bit if I think it needs it. So maybe I go 500. And because it's locked in proportion, it's going to automatically adjust the height when I put in a width. Then I'm going to say 350 pixels per inch instead of 72. And you can see how distorted it gets because we're creating a whole lot of pixels. But we're making it the space is the appropriate resolution space for printing. It's just the image isn't good enough for it. So we're going to be creating a good enough image. And then I can go to image canvas size to grow the paper around it. Again, in inches. This time, I'm going to make it 8 inches by 10 inches around it. And then to make it look like it looks in Photoshop here, I'm just going to create a new layer the same way we do in Photoshop, using this little post-it. I can also go to Layer New. And then I'm going to use something we're going to use quite a bit coming up in the class, and that's just a, what's called a blanket fill. So this whole layer, I'm just going to say edit fill. And I'm going to choose to fill it with white. The reason I'll use this instead of the paint bucket or some other tool is so I'm guaranteed it's 100% white. There's no off-white pixels at all. And then I'm going to move that underneath. So this is what I have. Both of these, whether it's in Photo P or in Photoshop, these are just guiding layers. If you double click on the layer name, you can even name it. So this will not appear in your final image. This is just something we build on top of. And we don't want it in our final emoji because it's not a vector. It's really, really distorted. We want nice, clean, scalable graphics. The next thing I'm going to do, and you can see how similar it is in Photo P and in Photoshop, is I'm going to lock it. 
so that I can't accidentally move it or change it. The guiding layer. I can lock my background too. And now I'm going to show you how you build vector shapes. And it's really simple. So I'm going to do it in both programs just to get started. And then I'll continue in, in Photoshop because this is the Adobe section. So I'm going to start on top of my guiding layer. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the toolbar and work my way up. So at the very bottom is the magnifying glass. You can use it to zoom in. And if you hold Option, you can zoom out. That's the same in Photoshop. But that's a waste of a tool, really, because all you need at any time using any tool is Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out, Command zero, which is right next to the minus, to fit it all on screen. So practice that a little bit and see that your guiding layer is not a great resolution. It will look a little bit better than mine because I'm, I'm using a projector screens resolution, which is lower than your high def screens. But you can practice that with both, both zooming in, zooming out, and then command zero. You know, if you're really, really zoomed in, you need to fit it all on screen quick. Command zero just fits it. So that's the bottom tool. If you work your way up from there, two up from there, it looks just like a, a filled rectangle. Just looks slightly different in each program. These are the vector shapes. These are the only tools we're going to use to build your emoji. And we're not even going to use all of them. I don't want you to use the line tool at all. Because the line isn't a shape, right? Instead, we're just going to use the rectangle, the ellipse, the triangle, the polygon, or the custom shape. Some enterprising students will choose to also use types, type design because type design are vector shapes. So if I wanted to create this cowboy hat with an upside down giant curvy T, I could. But I'm gonna show you how to do it all with just vector shapes and manipulating these shapes. It's a limitation. We're not gonna draw our own vectors. We're gonna use shapes and then transform them, just like we did with your cartoon jumble. So what shape do you think is the biggest, most basic shape of this emoji? Yeah, that big yellow circle. So let's start with the ellipse tool. An ellipse is a basic shape that can be a circle or an oval, right? And if you just click and draw, that's what's going to happen. Notice that the ellipse tool comes with some properties. So it will have a fill color, in this case white, and it will have a stroke, in this case one pixel. That's the default. On the first shape you make, I want you to change that stroke to be what's called empty. It's like a red bar cutting through it, so no stroke. And then for the fill color, you can try picking something from the swatches, right? Or you can just click on the layer itself, double click right in the layer icon window, and you'll get to a color selector. And what's great about that is not only can you choose all the colors, but you can also just click on anything that's open in Photoshop and it will match that color exactly. So now that ellipse is that exact color, problem is it's the wrong shape, right? But if I delete now and I use that ellipse tool again and I hold down shift this time, it will be a perfect circle. And then I know how to change its properties. So I'm going to turn off its stroke, click off of it, double click on the shape layer window preview and then pick the color I want. And now I can use the move tool at the very top of the toolbar to move this into place. And there we have our circle. So if I zoom in, what's the difference? Well, this circle is going to be perfectly clean in my resolution. Very, very different than my guiding image. So our goal is to build an emoji we like with just these vector shapes using this as our guide. Now it becomes very quickly difficult to see our guide when we have a big yellow circle over the top of it or whatever first shape you're gonna draw. So what I'm gonna do next is make what's called an onion skinned guiding layer. 
And the onion skin, I'm going to click on my guiding layer and make a duplicate, Command J. And I can do all of this in PhotoP in the same way. Then I'm going to move that duplicate up above my first vector shape. And then I'm going to take its opacity down all the way to about 25, to only about a quarter opacity. It's like putting it on a thin piece of tracing paper. That's why it's called onion skinning and having it be able to be turned on and off, flapped on top. Then I'm going to lock that so I don't accidentally engage with that layer other than just turning it on and off. Now I can build more shapes. So what about these pink circles? I can use the ellipse tool again, and I can just click and draw, holding down shift, and it will make a new shape layer for me. We want them only to be shape layers. And then I gotta choose the color, so I double click, can move this out of the way. I can try to find a pink that I like, but it's easiest just to grab it right from the source. Then I use the move tool, move it into place, and if I want to match it exactly, I might use Command T or Free Transform and grow it just a little bit bigger. You can use the arrow keys to kind of nudge it into place. Now, if I wanted that exact same shape on this side, instead of trying to redraw it, I can just duplicate it. Command J. Lots of copy and paste here. And then in Photoshop, it's really helpful. I'm using the move tool. I've made a duplicate of it. If I hold down shift while I click and drag, it will hold it on its axis for me. And then I can just use the arrow keys to nudge it into place. Command J duplicates, makes a perfect copy of the layer you've selected and paints it up or places it above the layer you've selected. So Turn on my guiding layer again. Now I've got eyes I've got to work with. And I can always go back to these shape layers and adjust them. So these eyes, let's redraw those. I'm going to hold down shift so I get a perfect circle instead of an oval. And I'm going to fill that with white. It can help to deselect first. And I'm just going to push all the way to the upper left-hand corner to get solid white. Then I use the Move tool and that Command-T, I can shrink it down. Whoops. I don't want to hold Shift, though. It's kind of confusing because Photoshop has changed this in the last few editions. When you're using Command-T, it will automatically lock your proportions when you're dragging from a corner or scaling, so it won't distort. But when you're using a vector shape tool, you have to hold down shift to lock into a perfect circle or a perfect square. Now I'm going to duplicate that, Command-J, move it on over, and we just learn through repetition. You can use your arrow keys, nudge it into place. Now this is the difference. My guiding layer has the eyes, the white eyes behind the pink circles, right? So if I want to match that, I simply need to drag these white vector shapes underneath my pink vector shapes. That's why I say think of it as cutouts of construction paper right, that you're building. And then, of course, we have black pupils. So I'm going to go to my topmost vector shape. I'm going to use the ellipse tool again. The reason I go to the topmost vector shape is because it will always create the, the vector shape layer on top of whatever layer I already have selected. I'm going to double click and I'm going to choose black. Just basic graphics. Move that into place. I can use the arrow keys. I can use Command T. If I want to grow it towards the center, or shrink it in this case towards the center, I can hold down Option while I do that. But all of these are just helpful. And then I kind of like that placement more than right at the edge. So now let's duplicate that, and then move that over. 
If I hold down shift, 